Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Thanks for coming back to watch me continue to practice my watercolor painting. In today's practice, I decided to take a leaf from Japanese pattern designs that you would normally see in their decorative paper and fabric prints. As you can see, I've designed a circular motif of peaches and peach blossoms. I'm not very good at drawing flowers generally, and I expect that I'll do even worse in trying to paint them. However, I thought, especially with peaches seeming to be a rather simple shape to paint, I could practice my layering of colour and also develop more confident brush strokes with the background pattern that I'm going to make. So let's just see how I go. Also, as you can see, I changed my filming setup. So far, there's no weird swinging of the camera, but again, I do apologize. You can still see my big fat head worm its way into the screen every now and then and block out parts of the painting. Likewise, I am left-handed, so I only notice now that a lot of the time my entire left arm covers my work. I didn't really notice this before because I just take that for granted. However, I have kept this filming setup for the next few videos I've made, so I apologize if you can't see my brush strokes more clearly at this angle, but I still think you can see the process a lot more clearly than in the last video that I made. Peaches are a fruit that originated from China. Thousands of years ago, when they made their way to the west through the Silk Road, they did so by coming into the Mediterranean through Persia. And as a result, the fruit was misnamed as a Malum Persica, or Persian apple. The modern word for it in English actually comes from an old derivation of French. So the word Malum Persica, Persian apple, eventually evolved into the French word peche, and then turned into the English word peach. So, interestingly enough, in a nod to my last video, in ancient Greece, peaches do have their own symbolism. They're actually symbolic of fertility and were used as motifs in weddings. However, in its country of origin, in China, peaches are still an important symbol of longevity and immortality. And the white peach in particular, which is a pale cream with hints of pink and fuchsia, is featured a lot in Chinese art. Peaches are often given as gifts as well during important dates such as festivals and birthdays to friends and family in the modern era. Likewise, the wood from the peach tree is also highly valued. Peach wood was used to ward off evil spirits and demons and the like in the form of arrows made from peach wood which were shot in all directions to cleanse an area. Likewise, other votive artifacts were made out of peach wood like wands and wooden votive door gods. In Chinese folklore, the Queen of Heaven tends to a grove of peach trees that grow the peaches of immortality. These trees only bear fruit every couple of thousand years, so when they do so, during those times, the gods of heaven would hold a great feast and partake of the peaches of immortality. And these peaches are often featured in many other myths and legends, such as that of the famous Monkey King, otherwise known as Sun Wukong. In one of his many adventures, he actually tries to steal one of these peaches from the Queen of Heaven. I can't quite remember where, it's either at her sacred grove or during one of these heavenly parties where he causes chaos in order to obtain a peach for himself. In a modern culture nod, the 2017 Chinese movie The Legend of Wukong retells this particular part of the legend in a high action fantasy take. One of the primary characters is actually seen working in the heavenly kitchen of this fantasy version of the Land of Immortals, and she's seen preparing a peach of immortality, which is the size of your head, and it's going to be eaten at the upcoming festivities. In classic storytelling hijinks, she lifts the lid to serve the peach and it's of course gone. And from there, Wukong suddenly appears, gets sassy with the immortals, uh, shenanigans ensue, there's a lot of kicking. Peaches are also featured in the classical epic of the Romance of the Three Kingdoms, wherein the whole opening of the story, three of the main protagonists make an oath of brotherhood in a peach tree grove. We shall fight as brothers and end the chaos. If you're not familiar with this incredible epic tale and want a superficial but relatively fun taste of this story, go play Dynasty Warriors. It's one of my favorite games, and it's based on all the characters featured in the stories. And I used to play it back when I was in university, and it taught me to pronounce all the primary characters' names badly. I am Cow Cow. Good job. Anyway, Something I actually recently learned during my research is that the term the bitten peach is an old Chinese byword for homosexuality. It derives from the story of, and please forgive my really, really bad Mandarin, I do not speak it very well, so please 
please, I'm so sorry about this intonation. It tells the story of Mi Zixia, who was allegedly a courtier who had carried favor with the Duke Ling of Wei, who is an actual historical figure. I'm unsure if this tale is allegorical or if it really happened, but part of the story tells that Mi Zixia offered a half-eaten peach to the duke as a gift who apparently favored him because of his great beauty and may have briefly been engaged in a relationship with him. It's an interesting story and I think I'll have to do more reading on its meaning and its origins for another project perhaps. The peach is also featured in Japanese folklore, with the best known example being the famous fairy tale of Momotaro, otherwise literally translated to peach boy. The story goes that an old childless couple found a peach floating down the river near where they lived. They took it home and cut it open and out sprang a little boy whom they called Momotaro and raised as their own son. When he grew older, Momotaro heard of an island aptly named Onigashima, or Demon Island, where some demons lived and kept their treasure after they terrorized the local villages. Momotaro decides to take it upon himself to defeat them and sets off on his adventure. Before leaving the house, his parents give him, and this is rather important, a whole meal of dango, or millet dumplings, which he takes with him on his adventures. As he journeys to the island, he meets a dog, a monkey, and a pheasant. I'm not sure if that's the actual order that he meets them in. And they join Momotaro in his adventure and agree to help him in return for a piece of dango that he had in his lunch pack. When they get to the island, each animal helps Momotaro to defeat the demons and they all take the treasure home. Again, if you want to see how Momotaro is ingrained in Japanese culture in a very casual way, I recommend the comedy anime Hozuki no Reitetsu. It's a comedy slice of life anime telling the story of a demon who acts as a secretary of the King of the Dead in the Japanese version of the Underworld. Momotaro is actually a secondary character, but he's very, very funny, and he tends to the peaches of immortality in the Garden of Heaven. His animal companions all have their own personalities and are quite endearing and decide to take their own separate jobs in the underworld so that they can earn their own livelihoods. It's a very, very cute anime, and all the characters are quite endearing. Aside from the iconography of peaches, I decided to also use known Asian patterns as a background. In this painting, I use wagara, which is a Japanese term for the way they do their print patterns. The bottom pattern of overlapping circular waves is known as seigaiha. It is symbolic of the big waves in the ocean. The pattern was often featured in Chinese map making as a way to depict the sea, and in Japanese print, the seigaiha pattern is actually symbolic of good luck, as well as resilience and strength. The second more flowy pattern that intersects the top and circular motif are more stylized waves and smoke of some sort. I don't know, I was also trying to make it up as I went along. I then used copious amounts of gold-based watercolor to embellish the painting, hoping to give it the same effect you see with the Asian gilded fabrics that you see in kimonos, for example. As always, I think I layered the colors far too heavily, but I do like the way the simple flesh of the peach came out. The flowers still look really weird to me, so I think I may need to do more plant and flower painting practice. Nevertheless, I think this one came out a bit better than the last one. If still a little bit too busy to my eye, maybe I did too much too quickly. I will likely do another video in the future where I tackle another similar graphic to see how I may have applied my learnings, if at all. Like my previous video, I will continue to practice drawing portraits without heavy reliance on reference photos, but my next video will likely be attempts at doing a landscape, which is probably the subject matter I'm the most weak at. Anyway, thanks so much as always for watching yet another attempt at practicing watercolor. If you would like to see me paint and chat about anything else in particular, please drop me a comment below. I may eventually paint in oil for one episode, mainly because I feel I'm stronger in using that medium, but I like to think of these videos as shared attempts at learning. Having said that, there's always room for learning and improvement in any medium I do, be it watercolor or oil. Well, this one seems to be a little bit shorter than my last video, thank goodness. Likely because I think I managed to paint this more efficiently than the last one. I think? Maybe? I don't know. As always, practice makes um better. So let's see how I go for my next painting. Don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. Bye!